In this presentation, we will continue on with part eight of our partnership comprehensive problem where we will be balancing the balance sheet. Here we are in our form 1065. We left off last time we entered the data into our system in terms of the income statement, but we did so so that we would reconcile to the book balance rather than the uh, tax balance. However, that should be enough for us to reconcile our balance sheet, which is what we want to do now, then go in and look at our Schedule K and M1 adjustment. So if I go then to page five, looking at page five, we can see that this is our Schedule L or our balance sheet. Scrolling down, we're out of balance. We've got the total assets down here, not matching the liabilities and equity. And we've reconciled everything except the the capital account here. So then we said, hey, we got to go back and let the system calculate the capital account. In other words, if I go back to the detail, we go to the balance sheet and the, the uh, data input for the balance sheet. You'll recall we entered into everything in the ending balance exactly, but we didn't put anything into the partner's capital accounts. We didn't overwrite that. Now we did, we first overwrote it to see if we're in balance. Then we took it out and said, we need the system to then calculate it. So how would the system calculate it? It would take the beginning balance here. Then it would take the income for the book basis is, which is correct, 355278. And then if there's something else involved, it would typically be distributions. So we would think that the missing factor here between these two numbers, the distributions, that's what's putting us out of balance. So in other words, if you took this number here and you increased it, if you took this number and you increased it to 397667 plus the net income, which is on the book basis, the 355278, that's going to give us the 357945. But that doesn't put us in balance because liability assets don't equal liabilities plus equity. So the difference then you would think would be draws. So what we're off by is going to be the 698445 minus the 848445. That's going to be 150,000. Is that the amount of draws that we need to input in some way, shape, or form? Let's go back to our data. We'd have to dig into this and we see that we have the, the draws here that we've broken out separately, which is nice into another, and they're not included in the capital. There and there, those two add up to the 150,000. So that's it. You'd think that we'd be able to enter the draws and we'd be in balance. So how do we enter the draws into this system? So if I go back into the tax return and I go back down, I'm in uh, the page five, schedule L, the balance sheet going down to the M2. The M2 is an analysis of the capital accounts. And so the analysis of the capital accounts is going to be the beginning balances typically plus the income, which is now the 355, 278. So, and that's given us currently the 752, 945, which is here. Then we're going to enter the draws. So the, so the draws are, are going to be what's coming out that's going to be a distribution line six. We're going to say it's a cash distribution 6A. I'm going to right click and jump then to 6A. And that should be a total of 150,000. I'm going to put the total here. And then we're going to go to our allocations and allocate that total out uh, between the two partners. So there's the 150. I then go to the allocations and I'm going to say I'm going to take that amount of distributions and allocate it to the partners, uh, the partners Tim and James. So how much should they get? Uh, Tim's getting 45 or took out 45,000. And then James is taking out the 105. So 105. And this little reconciliation ties out down here. So it's a bit all applied out. So that's good. And then we can go back to the form going up top to the forms. So there we have that. And if I scroll back up and see if we're in balance, now the total assets equal the liabilities and equity. So now we have something that's in balance and, and now we're in a really good position to, to move forward. So what we have now, if we look at page one, we've got our, our net income on a book basis. We haven't done any kind of tax adjustments for it. We kind of forced the book basis. And then we've got the page five, which is the balance sheet and we can see that we're reconciled on the balance sheet next thing we're going to do then is we're going to take each of these yellow items that we know we're going to need some kind of m1 or schedule k type of adjustment or, or remove an override or something like that we're going to do them one by one and we're going to do them in a systematic way so that if we go back over here we say we start with something in balance then we're going to do something funny to it that we're going to think of like a journal entry typically an m1 or schedule k adjustment 
that will hopefully end in balance. Once we've done that adjustment, see how the two sides work within the software and we'll see how it works in a more transparent way within Excel by, by analyzing them one at a time. We're going to start off with the depreciation, by the way, which will be the most complicated uh, of them. The rest of them will be very simple once, <laughs> once we have finished the more complicated uh, depreciation because it will be a sale, a disposal, and there's multiple components to that uh, when we go into it. So just note that this can be a really useful factor if you're working with somebody else uh, that's going to be supervising you. If you're doing the data input and you can take the data input to this point and then go to somebody else and say, now there was a disposal of equipment. I've got everything reconciled and I need help with this one component to, to, to reconcile it. And now they're at a point that they, that it, they can work with it instead of basically uh, inputting the whole return or, or they can help you out with that one uh, component so you're you're really in a in a much better situation this way than trying to enter the the depreciation in kind of as you go because then if you have a problem like I say there's no real base point to start over again other than basically to review every number in the return